I was at work, yeah, just a normal day really. Hiya, it's only me, I'm gonna leave from work now. I always ring William when I leave from work to walk to the car. Just to have that, I always just ring him just to let him know that I'm finished work and I'm on my way home. I just remember sort of walking to it and sort of, you know, unlocking it and that's it really. It's all I can remember. I think I told my brother-in-law that I swear to some sort of wildlife. I'd been trying to get hold of Sam on the phone and there was no answer and I was starting to worry a little bit anyway. I had a phone call um, on my mobile phone and it was a policeman asking um, if a, the police could come and see me wherever I was. They said that there was no other cars involved um, but just that Samantha had been involved in a collision with a tree and that she had life-threatening injuries. And we just raced at A&E where Sam was there in their recess. They asked would I like to see her before she was anaesthetised and I said obviously yes, we went to see her. Um, And there was just so much blood. There was just so much blood. She had a big pad on her neck and her head was in a brace and they hadn't excluded any spinal injuries. So she was in a raw state, just raw um, and vulnerable. And it was horrible to see her like that. I don't know what goes through your mind. It's, you get little flashbacks of when they're they're little, they're kids and what you do with them. I felt like my world had just crashed down actually, to be honest. They'd say she'd lost a lot of blood, probably three litres of blood on the scene because she had severed her jugular vein. Worst day of my life, really. It's, I try not to think about it, but it's, it's reality. And if it wasn't for someone like Barry Hart, then she wouldn't be here. She wouldn't be here. My name is Barry Hart. I'm a critical care paramedic with the Norfolk Accident Rescue Service charity. Uh, NARS is a charity which provides enhanced medical care at the scene of accidents and medical emergencies to support the ambulance service within the area. I received a call from Ambulance Control asking if I was available to attend a serious road traffic collision. The quickest and safest way to control the bleeding on that occasion was to put some temporary stitches in just to close the wound and help control the bleeding. He's, he saved a life, you know, and we really owe it to him and we really need to let people know about NARS, you know, they really need to understand actually what they do. But it was really the A&E consultant that had told me that if Barry hadn't have acted in the way that he did at the roadside, then there would have been nothing for he or his team could have done at the hospital. To think we almost lost her, and, and now we have a granddaughter, you know, it's, it's beyond amazing. Words, just, it's not enough, like, doesn't feel like it's enough. Um, yeah, I just want, I want it to be aired so everyone knows about, you know, the amazing work that these people do. It's all voluntary, it's just incredible, absolutely. And, I owe my life to them. It's not for any financial reward or the glory or anything at all. It's, if you like, personal satisfaction to know I've done some good. I know it's a bit old fashioned in these days, but that's what I think anyway. Our family would not be complete if it wasn't for NARS. These people work tirelessly, they work in their own time, they already work in a medical field which is demanding and exhausting. And, and to then give up your free time to be on call, to just drop what you're doing, to go and to be to go to the assistance of another human being. None of us knows if our survival depends on their survival. We never know when some, when we need a Barry. I I went to bed that night never knowing I'd need a Barry. Um, but without him, without him, I don't want to think about without him. <laughs>